Hey gang, this is Andy over at Falco K9 Academy and our new video blog, which you're going to be hosting on Tumblr currently, as we begin to learn how to uh, create this content and make it valuable, valuable to our, our friends and uh, customers. I almost said family, but I guess you are kind of like family. Uh, we are going to probably evolve and th some things will change. Um, maybe the setting will be different or something like that. But what we're going to do is try to bring you current information as it comes through our doors and our telephones and our emails and all of our other social media that we come through and uh, keep you up to date and so that we can kind of have an interactive thing going on here. You guys can email us and I'll make a video about it or whatever the case is. Uh, we're going to try to provide as much training as possible so you guys have some value in visiting our video blog and our website and our YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So as I said uh, in our very first video blog that I, I put out there uh, over the weekend, the first thing we're going to talk about is my visit to Philadelphia and the NPMA conference, the Canine Conference for the National Pest Management Association. Now, first of all, I want to tell you that the National Pest Management Association is a fantastic organization. They are doing everything they can to make sure that this new um, this new thing for detection dogs or the new industry for detection dogs, this bed bug thing, is going to be something that's going to be valuable and managed. Uh, they're, they're really trying to do their very best to try to kind of bring everybody together to make sure that there is some type of uh, consistency between one dog team to the next. Now, they've never obviously been around dog people very much. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna find out that it's a pretty difficult thing and I think they've already found that out uh, and that's why they think it's so important to try to start the process of getting this thing put together but um, being the first bed bug detection dog canine conference uh, I think that was the, uh, the, the probably the strongest message the strongest message is there's so big a difference between the people that are over here and the people that are over here now whatever one's right I can't quite tell you somewhere it's in the middle um, there's just a lot of differences between one person and the next now this was just on June 1st to the 3rd uh, last week, uh, 2011. So we'll see how things evolved as we go through the year. Uh, with Falco Canines uh, Academy's um, relationship with the Rollins Corporation, hopefully we can help in bringing some of these things together with our experience. Now, as you may or may not know, we've been training police dogs for about 25 years. And over that time, we've trained thousands of dog teams, detection dog teams, patrol dog teams, and pet dog teams maybe as much as a thousand a year, something like that, between our classes, our courses, and dog sales, and, and, and vendors, uh, the, the stuff we've been sending out to people, police departments, that kind of stuff. We're talking about thousands of dog teams, people and human beings. We don't just train the dogs and then give them to you and wish you good luck. Uh, we spend time uh, training the handlers. So hopefully that experience will come into play here because what I saw over there right now, and I'm gonna be very careful not to name any names or, or talk about uh, people in a, in a poor light, but I'm sure there's a lot of well-intentioned people that are dog trainers or vendors that are trying to do the right thing, uh, but maybe don't quite have the experience yet. Some of the classes I heard put on, there was some information that was put out that just was not um, necessarily good information or correct information. Um, and so I found myself talking to some people that had actually stood up and asked questions from the speakers and helped them understand what maybe a better answer to their question was or maybe that there was another way of doing it that might be more effective. So we'll see how all this kind of plays out. The other most important thing that they talked about at the uh, conference was about certification. Now there were some certification people uh, over there, some uh, let's see, the NESDECA, WDDO, and some other one, I'm not quite sure who they are, IDD something, uh, but they're, I think they're fairly new. Um, there was even some big differences between the different certifications and their philosophies and their processes. And so I'm still on the fence on whether I'm going to encourage Rollins to use one of them or that we should probably develop one of ours. I think the biggest thing is making sure that training and certification reflects real life. And that has always been our mantra. you got to make sure that the dogs that you train, the dogs that you're using out there, have trained and have worked uh, in an environment that replicates the real life. And as we've been using dogs now to provide bed bug detection dog services, I went out there personally and handled dogs on jobs and realized that uh, it's not much different than narcotics or explosive detection dogs in that their environments, they're in environments that have distractions such as uh, uh, dog urine uh, in the carpets, uh, dog food in the kitchens, uh, balls and toys and food on the ground in the bedrooms that we're searching. Uh, I've been in places where there's a hoarder. Uh, I've been in very, very clean places, but it actually has been the not the norm. The norm has been the other thing. Uh, dealing with 
tons of crap inside of a search, whether it's a warehouse, a, an apartment, a home, or something like that. So um, one gentleman I know stood up and said, well, I just don't go to those jobs if they have that kind of distraction. And I go to myself, I said, well, aren't you minimizing your opportunity to make money in your business? If you're having to resort to only take those places that are pristine, like a, uh, an expensive hotel or maybe a house that's never been lived in, uh, you're, you're limiting yourself to a very small customer base if you're not training your dog through these distractions. If you can't work your dog around people that are standing around and you can't work your dog with a dog in a cage, a crate, or a bird in a cage, or a hamster, uh, I think you've got bigger problems than, uh, than anything else that maybe you selected the wrong dog or didn't get the training that was necessary for you to be successful. So those are some of the things I took away from my first experience with dealing with some of these folks, that they had not been told all this or not been trained uh, enough um, on how to deal with real life. As you see in one of our videos on YouTube, we discuss the importance about bridging the gap between training and real life, and that is so important. So I know that I'm harping on a lot, but that is uh, some of the big, big difference uh, uh, between uh, the dogs that we help people with that we put out there is that we help them bridge the gap and even after we've done that in the academy people forget we get the phone calls and say uh oh my dog's having trouble in real life but he's doing great in training well do you remember on day two <laughs> when i told you that you have to find a way to bridge the gap and one of those ways is by going out there and actually doing the job and putting your dog in positions to where he can find stuff in real life and then we go over the whole thing that we teach here in our class in our academy on how to do that. There's ways to do that and there's ways to do it very effectively. So you need to make sure and do that. Uh, just happened to be teaching a class here earlier where we have, this is, a, this is a training aid. These are all the things that are in your training aids. No matter, I don't care what you're using. Uh, they probably have most of the, these things, if not these things, or even more that aren't even listed on here. These are the training aids your dogs are finding on a day-to-day -day basis in training. Now, many times your dogs won't find more than maybe one or two of these things out in the real world and when they don't smell the rest of the things they're going to walk by it and they're not going to find it so you have to know how to bridge the gap and take some of these things out uh, of your dog's olfactory and memory so that he actually can be effective out on the street so the mpma canine conference overall fantastic i think it was a fantastic way to check the temperature to see where we're at and hopefully we can grow and move forward you know uh, Terry Fleck was one of the speakers and also Larry Myers. They're not particularly friendly because they often battle each other in court uh, in regard to expertise in canine. However, the one thing that they did agree on is that this industry has a long ways to go. And uh, there's some folks in there that probably need to be weeded out right now. And there's some people that need to be brought into it that have a stronger expertise, uh, a little bit more experience in problem solving. Problem solving is huge for detection dogs, patrol dogs, pet dogs. How you solve problems between the handler and the dog is gonna be key to the success. Uh, I think we're one of those companies that does that. That's what our history is. Uh, I trained problem solving uh, for about 10 years with the, police, uh, the International Police Canine Conference all across the United States and North America. So I know how important it is to do problem solving. Um, um, let's see, I think that's about it. There were some great meals. There was some lousy service in the city of Philadelphia. <laughs> I'll never forget some of the lousy service we had. Uh, we had some good times. I'm glad that I was able to meet all the people that I met out there. There's some fantastic people. There's some people that just don't have enough information to be successful. There's probably more of those than anything else. So I'm not bad mouthing anybody who was there. I'm just telling you that there's a long ways to go. Some people just need to be brought into uh, the real world, the real world of detection dog work. If we can train a dog as we do here to train and work out in Palm Springs in 120 degree weather with people around and, and dog crap on the ground and cat crap in the house while they're searching. Uh, I know that we can do it with the bed bug detection dogs too. On leash, off leash, doesn't matter. Your dog should be able to do it. So there's my report on the MPMA. I hope it was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in our next uh, video blog. And those of you that were at the conference, can't wait to see you guys at the next conference. I will see you in New Orleans, which is just in August, I believe, which is the next MPMA uh, super bug, super bug conference thing. All right, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for visiting our new video blog. Take care, talk to you later, bye.